This page allows you to select uh, the appropriate swash plate for your individual helicopter. The T-Rex uh, 500 that we're working on does have 120 degrees CCPM. Um, but if you've got a different sort of swash on your helicopter, uh, you can simply uh, select the buttons to make sure that the software knows exactly what your swash plate is. Um, so we'll go for 120 degree CCPM and um, it does allow you if you've got a multi-blade helicopter to also uh, change the virtual phasing. If your swash plate is not available on one of the pre-select buttons then there is an advanced view which you can select and I believe that will allow you to configure any style of swash plate um, using up to four servos uh, but I don't really understand how that works and I've never actually used it so I won't say any more about that we'll just deselect the advanced view and uh, we'll just keep the fairly simple setup that we've got here um, because that serves our purposes so reading the text at the top of the page, the second line, it tells you to choose a swash plate type for your CCPM. So 120 degree CCPM is what we've got on the T-Rex 500 here, so that's what we've selected. And it also tells you to connect your servos in the order given. So um, we're going to use the elevator servo for channel 1. Uh, we're going to use the left roll servo is going to go into channel 2 on the fly bonus unit. And the right roll servo is going to go into channel 3 on the fly bonus unit. So following the instructions in Studio X, we're now going to connect the appropriate servo lead to the appropriate port on the rear of the fly bonus unit. So now let's connect those servo leads one at a time. Uh, making sure the appropriate lead is connected to the appropriate port on the fly barless unit and making sure that the signal wire is in the correct orientation. You'll notice that I've disconnected the servo horn swash plate linkage rods from each of the three swash plate servos before I actually connect the leads to the uh, fly barless unit. There's a danger if we don't do that that we can actually overdrive the servos uh, and cause the servos to burn out and obviously we don't want that at this stage. That's all the servos connected and you can possibly hear a slight buzzing noise which is quite normal with digital servos and flying barless units. So having selected the appropriate swash plate and connected the swash servos to the heli we can now move on to the next page. So we're now on the swash plate servo centre position page. So on this page there's three things to do. The first thing we have to do is to get the servo centre position so that the arms on the servo are at 90 degrees to the servo and they will also be at 90 degrees to the linkage rod. After we've adjusted the servo arms we then need to make sure that the swash plate is level. It is approximately centered on the main shaft and that the blade pitch is zero degrees on both blade grips. Now when you come onto this page you'll probably notice that your servos start jumping up and down and if it was attached so would be the swash. The reason for this 
is that the software drives the servos to the centre position. Um, and now, if you move the collective stick on the transmitter, then the servos won't actually move. So going through the steps, one at a time, the first thing we need to do is to make sure the servo arms are perpendicular to the servos. So here we're looking at the arm on the right side of the heli and you'll notice that the servo arm is not sitting perpendicular to the servo. So what I need to do is I need to loosen the hex bolt, take the servo arm off the servo, reposition it on the spline so I can get it as close to 90 degrees as possible. I'll make that adjustment now and once I've done that then we'll have a look. I say exactly at 90 degrees, that's a little difficult to achieve because all we can do is look at the angle visually. There's no real way of measuring it accurately, um, but we just have to do the best we can. So having set the servo arm mechanically as close to 90 degrees as possible, we can now use this page to get it even closer. So we are altering the right roll servo, so the channel 3 servo, so it's these plus and minus buttons here that we'll be altering to try and get it in exactly the position we need. So I'm now looking at the servo, altering the values as necessary to try and get the right roll servo as close to perpendicular as possible. And I think that's about at 90 degrees. It's not ever so easy to uh, judge, particularly as the top of the servo horn here and the bottom of the servo horn here are not parallel. To aid with your assessment of this angle here being at 90 degrees, then what you can do is you can place an object through the centre of the hex bolt that holds the servo horn on and the centre of the hole on the outermost point of the servo horn and basically it's just a matter of judging that by eye and trying to establish if it's 90 degrees or not but as far as I can tell that's as accurate as we're going to get it. So now it's just a matter of repeating the process for the left roll servo and also for the elevator servo. I'll just do that now and once that's done I'll be back. You can now see I've turned the heli around and we're looking at the left roll servo on the left side of the heli with the nose of the heli pointing to the left presently. Again I removed the servo horn from the spline, set it as close as I could initially mechanically and then having done that made this fine adjustment in Studio X to get the servo arm exactly at 90 degrees. So now it just remains for us to do the elevator servo. This is a little bit more difficult because as you can see the elevator servo arm is located internally inside the heli airframe but it's just a matter of going through the same process again and getting that servo arm as accurately as you can at 90 degrees to the servo. You can assist this setup by looking through the slot on the airframe pointing out just here um, to assist because you can just about see the end of the servo there. You may also notice some of the servo wires in the shot um, at the moment, all I've done is roughly run the servo wires where I want them to go. Once the setup is complete, I will then go back and make sure that all the wiring is neat and tidy and there's no chance of it actually getting caught up in any moving parts once we're in flight. So once again, I've gone through the same process on the elevator servo and as far as I can tell, that's as close to 90 degrees as we're going to get. On the face of it, those values look quite high, 
but remember when making adjustments in Studio X quite large numbers have a quite small effect on the actual servo position in the heli. So having completed the first step on this page it's now a matter of connecting the rod linkages between the servo arms and the swash plate and making sure that the swash plate is level. So when you build the heli, set up the servo swash plate linkage rods to the length that the manual states and this will be your starting point. So when you first select the swash plate servo centre page in Studio X, Studio X drives all the servos to the centre position. And having set all the linkage rods to the correct length, then if we put on the swash plate levelling tool, then what you should see is that the swash plate levelling tool touches the top of the ball link in all three positions for the left and right roll servo and also the elevator servo. Now you can see here that the swash plate levelling tool is actually touching the uh, top of the ball link as indeed it is for the elevator servo ball link. But if you look at the right hand side of the swash, you can see there's a gap between the ball link on the swash and the swash plate leveller. In fact, I can almost get the hex driver through the gap. I can accept that there may be a small adjustment required to get the swash plate exactly level. But at this stage, the swash plate should not be that far out. So the question is, why is it so far out? I guess what I need to do is to go back and recheck that the linkage rods are all the same length and recheck that the servo horns are perpendicular to both the servo and the linkage rod. So I rechecked the linkage rod lengths and in fact they were all correct. But when I look closely at the left and right roll servo horns, they were not both exactly the same. So we're now looking at the left side of the helicopter and this is the left roll servo horn. And you can see that the servo horn center is approximately the same height as the hex bolt that's in this L-shaped strengthening bracket. We're now looking at the right side of the helicopter on the right roll servo and you can see that the center of the servo horn on this side is actually below the hex bolt that's in the L-shaped strengthening bracket. So although previously I tried to get the servo horns all exactly the same, you can see that by eye that's actually quite difficult to achieve. So what I will do is I will make sure that those two servo horns are exactly the same position using this L-shaped bracket and this hex bolt as a guide and then I'll be back again. So what I need to do is I need to raise the servo horn slightly for the right roll servo. So at the moment the value for centering is set at minus 100. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that until those servo horns are both at the same level. Um, and I obviously need to do that for the right aileron servo. So now the position of the servo horn for the right and left roll servos match. 
So we finally ended up with a value of minus 2 for the channel 3 servo for the right aileron on the swash plate servo centre position page. We started out with a value of minus 100 before we made the correction. On the face of it that's quite a large uh, change but in reality uh, it's only a very small adjustment at the servo. So having made that change we now need to go back to the heli and the swash plate levelling tool and see what the effect is. Difficult to pick up on this shot because it's quite difficult to focus on but the swash plate levelling tool is now touching the top of the ball links for the left roll servo, the elevator and whilst it's fair to say that a large portion of the gap here is closed and I can no longer get my hex dot driver through the gap I can actually just about get a small piece of card through that gap this size of gap is within the range that I would expect normally and it's now a matter of altering the length of the linkage rod until the ball link here touches the uh, bottom of the swash plate levelling tool. It's important to remember when altering the linkage rod length that you remove the linkage rod from both the servo and the swash plate end and what you do is you alter the length symmetrically by turning the ball link on each end. What you don't want to do is have a situation where the ball link is fully driven home on one end and is hanging on by a thread at the other end. So let's remove the swash plate levelling tool. Let's remove the ball link from the swash plate and similarly we'll remove the ball link from the server. I'd expect to have to lengthen the linkage rod by approximately one or two full turns. So we'll lengthen the linkage rod by one half turn on that end and similarly one half turn on that end. So the swash plate levelling tool is now making contact at all three positions on the swash and there are no gaps. So now we have successfully levelled the swash. We're just about to uh, connect the main blades to the heli to uh, continue with the setup. As a reminder, I'd just like to say it's important that you disconnect the motor wires so there's no danger of us accidentally starting the heli by mistake. So before continuing, we need to put the head on the heli. So I'll quickly do that and then I'll be straight back with you. We also need to attach the main blades. Next we need to align the main blades with the fore and aft axis of the helicopter so that the blades are parallel and over the boom. In order to ensure that the blades are at zero degrees pitch, then we need a pitch gauge and I'll suggest that you use a digital one. Having zeroed the pitch gauge and put it on the blades, you can see that this blade is showing an angle of positive 3.4 degrees. 
the linkage rod that goes between the swash plate and the blade grip arm here was set to 53 millimeters in accordance with the manual's instructions. So if the servo horn is set correctly at 90 degrees to both the servo and the lower linkage rod and the swash plate is level and the upper linkage rod between the swash plate and the blade grip arm is set as per the manual and the pitch on the blades is too much the only thing we can do is shorten the upper linkage rod here until it gives us zero degrees on the blade. So I will shorten that linkage rod now and when I've done that I'll be right back. So having shortened the linkage rod by three full turns you can see that that's now given me plus 0.4 of a degree. It's actually flickering between 0.4 and 0.5. If I need to make another correction, I'm going to have to go to another full complete turn. And experience has taught me that normally one turn on the pitch link is approximately one degree on the blades. So if I shorten it by another turn, I'm probably going to end up with around about minus 0.6 of a degree. So I'm not actually going to be able to get it any closer than that. So that has only altered the pitch of the blade that the pitch gauge is currently sitting on. So effectively now we've just got to repeat the process for the other blade. So the other blade before adjustment is at about 3.1, occasionally it flickers to 3.2 degrees. And after adjustment comes out at 0.1 of a degree. That's minus 0.1. It is important that you keep the blades aligned perfectly with the boom. Because if you don't, if you don't have the blades in the correct position, you can see I only have to move it a small amount to the left and the reading changes to around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of a degree. If I spin that blade all the way around and return it to the position where it was before, Hopefully, we'll get the same reading. So that's step three complete, and in fact, that's the swash plate servo center position page complete in total. So we will move on to the next page, but that will be in the next video.